So in the machine learning in Gen AI, this is all really um, Gen AI related um, functionality. And the top of the list is a new mechanism for orchestrating um, uh, LLMs. I, I haven't listed it here, but we also have support for a whole bunch of new LLMs, including local LLMs. So you can now download things like Olama to your local machine and the functions like LLM synthesize and uh, LLM example function, they will work without sharing any of your data to remote services the way they have in the past. So probably worthy of being a point is local LLM evaluation. They're not as powerful, these local models, and the bigger ones, you need some pretty serious hardware to run them on, but they're local. Uh, so there is no per query cost, apart from electricity and CPU time. You're not paying a provider for them, and they are privacy-oriented because you are hosting everything. It's all local to you. But LLM graph is really how you orchestrate what you want the LMs to do. And you know the buzzword of today is sort of agentic. And in some people's view of what agentic means, uh, it's sort of multiple LLM agents doing different bits of the job and working together in a, in a team. And that's what LLM graph does, is allow you to orchestrate chain of thought and independent agents doing bits of a problem. So here's my simple example. I've got three agents in this sort of agentic language. Poet one, poet two, and judge. And each have their own role within the process. Uh, poet one is going to write a short poem about summer. Poet two is going to write a short haiku about winter. And then the judge is going to take the output of poet, uh, poem one, sorry, the output of poet one and the output of poet two and decide who did the best job amongst those. Now, if I, um, I can give you a kind of sense of the relationship there if I load that up. So we've got two input nodes and an output node, uh, but there could be any number of inputs and outputs. It doesn't all have to lead down to a single output. We might have a side thing that is a, a, a precy or something that uh, is a second, is another output. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it and say, I just want the final outputs, which will be the judge. And you'll see it briefly here, computing nodes poet one and two in parallel, two finished, poet one is still thinking. Um, and now the judge is acting and we get uh, um, its conclusion. <laughs> um, and it's actually refused to, to judge, which is very equivocal of it and very LLMish. I guess I needed to improve this prompting that says, I insist you choose one of the best uh, and uh, um, you know, use whatever criteria you want, something that would force it into a decision. Um, so slightly disappointing results on this occasion, but you know, several features there, you could see that the, the kind of, the scheduling was all automated that poet one and two are independent in the graph so they could happen in parallel. And the judge couldn't operate until both one and two were in. Uh, and it also deals with things like if there was a vertice here that was the, the precy, the poems, but I didn't ask for the precy, then it doesn't waste time computing the output that nobody's looking for. So it's intelligent about the orchestration. And these things can be arbitrarily complicated. So here's a slightly richer example where we are, um, going through a decide, review, rewrite, and present stage. So we've got some input, and the decide node says, is there something wrong with it? This is this dotted line shows it's a conditional um, thing, so it might just terminate there. So it's effectively an LLM-based if statement. The review says, what's wrong with it? The rewrite says, rewrite it correctly. And the final line says, summarize uh, what's happened. And you can see here that these are just agents in that same sense. Um, but the review one, um, uh, is using Wolfram language code. So we actually have different kinds of, you can see from the coloring that there are different kinds of um, nodes that can mix decisions, LMs, mappable LM and Wolfram language code. And you can describe the whole flow of that knowledge through the graph. So now hopefully this one works a little bit better. We can give it correct flow and it's on the decide step. It decided there was nothing wrong with it. So it terminated. Whereas in the correct flow, uh, this time it says decide, it decided something was wrong, it reviewed it. It's rewriting it, and now here's my summary that uh, was um, here was the input and here was the output after being rewritten. So you can now take control of the breaking the problem down rather than hoping the LLM's intelligence, for lack of a better word, will know exactly what to do. You can break the, the task down, control it more finely about what happens at each stage. You can mix code and LLM in order to make really rich decision-making processes. In a way, what's gone before is this is the generalization of. So those who have been using LLM tools, LLM tool is a bit like the um, the Wolfram language um, uh, uh, vertex 
um, well, it's really like a, an LLM graph that has a decide if the tool should be used and then run Wolfram language and then put the two together. Um, and LLM synthesize is like one of the uh, LLM vertices in this. Um, so it's sort of bringing it all together into one rich workflow with all the power of the graph theory to analyze the graph for dependencies and 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 ordering. A couple of smaller things. Uh, we added the idea of semantic indexes. This is if you're doing um, what people think of very often as RAG, which is you index all your PDFs in your knowledge base uh, with a semantic index. So when I search for a particular phrase, you can find the document that appears to answer that. And then you can hand that to the LLM to read and summarize, or you can just return the document. You can just treat it as search. Um, so we've now exposed more internals of semantic ranking, uh, the function it depends on. So before semantic ranking could tell you which what of these words were, uh, which of say these words was most like fish, but now we can actually return the level of match um, as well as the rank, as well as in this case, I want to all of them. And we can see here that uh, tuna is the highest rank match, but we actually have the relevant score. Now, the reason why that's useful is there's also a new option, semantic search re-ranking, and that allows you to use semantic search to find relevant documents, but then use a supplementary test to decide how to return the final list. So if these weren't words, but were documents, then maybe that my search was, you know, how do I buy Mathematica? And it goes through all of the web pages that we've indexed on our site and says, well, there's the, the store page and there's the licensing page and there's some... Uh, other page that is how to buy extra credits or whatever, and they rank like this. But then I might re-rank by saying, but I actually want to give more preference to a newer page that's got the last change date more recently. And by being able to combine the relevance, I can weight that against date. So I might just say, give me the newest page out of the top four, but I might say something that is more than a year old should reduce the relevance by 10%. And well, something like price, then they would probably reduce it by 100%. Maybe being more than six months old would reduce it by 20%. Um, uh, but you know, the ability to weigh up relevance against other criteria, like the length of the document or other things like that, um, you need to have the relevant score to be able to make your kind of own re-ranking. But it basically, in the end, it's for implementing search. And this allows you to take more control over how you rank search results when you are using uh, Create Semantic Search Index as your mechanism for doing search.